On this episode, we talk about the positive changes in the grain markets and the upcoming weather. Joe shares a great example of soybean maturity difference when planted late. Don't forget to look for the opportunities that will come out of this challenging year. Hi, this is Joe Mershman from Mershman Seeds. Welcome to Cup of Joe, episode number 31. Today we're going to talk about some of the options and some of the things you should think about as you look for the opportunity to plant in the next few weeks. So today we have Tommy Johns, we have Turk Riganator and Ben Peeper, and uh, we're just going to, you know, obviously everybody's depressed about the weather, and uh, and rightfully so. I mean, uh, there's a lot of a lot of stress going on right now, but there's also a lot of opportunities, and I think right now as you're waiting for the ground to dry out, um, start looking for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So Turk, what do you think? Well, obviously opportunity, one of the opportunities is keep an eye on the green markets. I mean, we've seen a huge rally in uh, corn and soybeans both, and uh, with uh, uh, December corn uh, at 450 and uh, trading around 450 and November soybeans trading over $9, there are opportunities. And I know everybody says, well, uh, how can I sell something if I don't even have it planted? Well, we're going to get planted. There's going to be, you're going to have some seed get planted. And with the opportunity that we already know with the Trump money, you know, there's profitable levels to be had on soybeans. And so uh, don't overlook that. And then also on anybody that has a crop in still in the bin, don't overlook these, these this price increase that we've got right now. With last year's Trump money, if you still have beans in the, in the bin, you're at profitable levels. So don't uh, don't overlook that opportunity. And then uh, um, one of the other things I wanted to talk about on, on a positive is on the crop insurance side of it. You know, we're hearing things that possibly there may be some extensions for because of the widespread planning delays. Check with your crop insurance agents to see if that's an opportunity or a possibility for you with your agency or whatever. So, and then the other thing I wanted to talk about, Joe, is um, when we're looking at what our crop insurance levels are and what our preventive planning opportunities are and and all of those other things I think it always we've, we've kind of been promoting it always pays to plant if you absolutely can if you can't if you're 10 foot underwater um, and it's the end of July you're probably not going to plant but if you can get the ground the corn and soybeans in the ground in any way shape or form I think it's it's the wise thing to do uh, the, if you have revenue insurance don't forget that the, the December uh, price discovery is undoubtedly going to be higher this year than it was in the spring election, so discovery period. So your levels of insurance that you currently think you have will be going up with that December price discovery period. You want to go ahead and what, what, what is December price on corn and beans, Turk? Well, December price on, on uh, corn is 450. And uh, right now, I'm trading in that 450 range in December soybean or November soybeans are, are over nine dollars. So right. So we're looking at how much difference from what was originally well, the, set. Well, the, the spring price selections were uh, 954 on soybeans, and uh, and that's more to trade. We're mm -hmm. always talking about board trade and uh, uh, about four dollars on corn. So with uh, with uh, those, and we could see five dollar corn. I think. Uh, realistically, and we could probably see ten dollars soybeans realistically for the discover price uh, discovery. We don't know what it's going to do. Don't overlook that that option as well when you're making your decisions on what you're going to do. But I think the bottom line is still do your best to get the stuff in the ground, and you're going to be money ahead in the long run. Yeah, that brings me to uh, John Phelps, our weather forecaster uh, that we sponsor. And um, he just posted a, a new uh, forecast here based on some uh, two-week models. And I, I, I would call it semi-optimistic. Uh, if you're in the uh, upper Midwest, uh, he, he's talking about the jet stream moving. And uh, we're going to have a drier period here for the next two weeks. If you're down in uh, south of I-70, uh, particularly extreme uh, southern Illinois and Boot Hill, Missouri, the pattern may continue to persist. So. Um, we think that, that this pattern is cracking, and uh, we did email that out to everybody that's on our list uh, Thursday uh, morning to, to let you look at it and, and decide for yourself what it's saying. But we are seeing some 
positive things that the weather pattern is starting to break and it's mainly because of the southwest flow that we're getting and then meeting the moisture and the cold cold and, and warm humid air is meeting and, and we're those folks you know right through the middle of the corn belt have just been getting hammered i know this week we've had uh, a lot of rain here uh, as a you know we take a lot of pride in our, our facilities here at west point we can't even mow the grass i mean it, it's that bad so uh uh, you know, we, we threaten to get uh, six push mowers out to mow the 10 acres that we have. Uh, I mean, it's getting bad. So, um, anyhow, uh, we're all in the same boat together. We're all looking for the opportunity, and I think there's going to be some. Weather looks like the next two weeks. So, if we are planting June 15th, let's just make that a scenario. We're going to plant June 15th, hopefully earlier than that. What do we, what do we need to do? What, what should a farmer do if it's June 15th? Let's start with corn. Would you plant corn on June 15th? I mean, what? and if you decided that you're, you're a livestock producer, you've got to have corn. What What should you do if it's June 15th and, you're, and you can get in the field and you can plant some corn? What should you do? The, number one, get the corn in the ground. Worry about your herbicides and things like that. I mean, the herbicides and the nitrogen and all that stuff, you can worry about that. I mean, you can figure out different opportunities on or different decisions on how to worry about all those other things, but get the corn in the ground because that's the most important part when it's in the in the right, you know, when the, when the soil's right, make sure that, that that's what you're doing. You're not worried about anything else. Um, yeah, because we have different, there's herbicides that can be put on after corn. You know, you can put a, like a, like a Halix GT mm -hmm. is a one pass, pretty good one pass program that the corn can be, you know, boot high when you're, when you're spraying it and does a really good job of burning everything off. So, when June 15th rolls around, make sure your planter's ready to roll. Make sure you have the right hybrid. You know, I've been switching stuff up five, six day earlier maturities. I think June 15th, that still works around here. 106 day will still fit maturity needs the way you need them to fit. Um, make sure that the right corn's in the planter and uh, make sure that things are fit to be ready to roll. What about planting depth, Ben? You know, a lot, I've heard a lot of people say, boy, I want to get this corn out of the ground and get it, get it going quicker. but uh, that time of year, it, you, as we get uh, higher temperatures, it's going to dry out quicker. Planting depth is still very just as important. Uh, planting late as it is early. Absolutely, you, you you never vary. The planting depth should be one of the things that never varies when it comes to planting corn. It should be two inches no matter what because that I mean it's just structurally you have to have where your nodal roots and your seminal roots pop out of that corn plant. You have to have them in the correct place for that corn plant to function properly. Mm -hmm. So two inches no matter what. On, on soybeans, I can give you a real, real uh, thing that I learned a long time ago. It was that was back early in my career, uh, and uh, and I don't remember the year, but it was a very similar type year. We we were not able to plant soybeans in the West Point area until I mean we got full bore on June twentieth. June twentieth. I wish I remembered the year. Seventy three, maybe Joe. Maybe no, Joe. it was at, it was after I was uh, out of college, uh, just early in my career. So it's sometime it must have been in the in, in the seventies. I'm not sure, or early eighties. But I had a, a farmer uh, north of town, uh, and some of the best soil types uh, in this area, and he had uh, he was going to grow Richmond for us, which and the Richmond at that time was a four point five maturity. June twentieth. Normally, the latest thing we plant around here today, most farmers, was 4.0, maybe a 3.9. So he said, what should I do, Joe? I said, well, I'd plant it. You know, because based on everything I know, you're supposed to plant the full season soybean that you can, that you've got guts to plant that would make the yield. You know, because basically what you're doing is, you know, soybeans are short day plants. They grow vegetatively until they start shortening, shortening up, and then they uh, go into flowering and reproduction. So the longer vegetative uh, period you have of growth, the higher, taller the soybean plant is, the more node uh, locations you have and the higher yield potential. So these farmers trusted me and they planted a, a 4.5 in West Point, Iowa uh, on June 20th. And uh, it, the crop closed to 30 inch rows. It looked awesome all year, but early September, green as a gourd. And by the time we got to the middle of September, still green as a gourd. And we were getting, you know, uh, towards the frost date and we were still relatively green. But uh, the frost finally came, but we had just a tinge of yellow. The leaves were just starting to turn yellow. Well, that's physiological maturity for soybeans. 
once you see a tinge of yellow out there, you, know, you start seeing your first leaves turn yellow, you've reached the maximum weight that that soybean seed is going to make. At that point, it's just dry down. We did get a frost, and uh, of course, you know, when you got canopy, you're also holding the ground temperature up. So, long, long story short, uh, what happened was that the soybeans made 50 bushels per acre because it was a benlite field. Back then, we used to apply fungicides to our seed fields from the air. And um, I did nine yield checks with the way wagon across that field, and none of them dropped below 50. I remember it was middle of October, the Hawkeyes were on the radio, they were actually winning, so everybody was excited, the yields were good. But my uncle across the fence, he stayed with his Shawnees, which were the 2728. They made 30 bushels per acre, never closed the rows. And I never forgot that real world example. You want to stay as full season as you can because soybeans have somehow have the ability to make up that yield if you give them the opportunity. And uh, so that's my advice to farmers. If it's, if it's June 15th, uh, stay with that full season soybean. Uh, narrow your rows down if you can uh, because planting in 15 inch rows on June 15th is like planting in 30 inch rows with June 1. If you're concerned about an early frost, if you're going to be planting an early bean for your area, then you've got to really jump that population up, probably 25 to 30 percent. If you're, for example, if I was planting a 2.7 or 2.8 in West Point, my uncle back then should have put them in narrow rows and pushed that population up to 180,000 probably. And then he would have had a better opportunity for yield. So you can play the, the game either way, plant more seed, earlier varieties, put, put your hedge against frost, or go with the full season soybean. If you've got 30 inch equipment, you can't change it row width, go with that full season soybean and that will give you your best chance. But uh, we raised some extremely high quality seed that year, uh, planted uh, that late. So uh, we're optimistic that uh, that opportunity is going to exist again this year. Joe, would you say on the, you said on the earlier beans, you know, raise it 20, 30 percent on the population for the later planted beans or for the later um, maturing beans, would you say 10 percent? Yeah, right now 15? we're recommending um, after June 1st, 10 percent increase. On later maturing beans? On, on, in beans in general. Okay. And then as we get to the 15th, just keep pushing that number okay. up. Good. Yep. It's good to know. But th there are still opportunities. You know, Turk and I were talking, you know, we, we have a little bit of gray hair. At least Turk's got more gray hair than I do. I, I, I don't have much hair at all. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, I, I can tell you that <coughs> for years, you know, uh, in, in our Missouri market, farmers down there, they would not plant until the June calendar rolled around because they always knew they were going to get hot stress weather in July and early August and then we knew that in the latter part of August we start it start cooling down we start getting rains so back in the day the Clark 63 was a popular variety in the 60s in northern Missouri which was a 4849 and that would not be planted till June uh, if, if we went out to farmers and told them you need to be planting products like Dallas or or um, Miami and northern Missouri and in, in, in June, they, they think we're crazy. But we, we sometimes forget how we used to do things. And just because of the speed of what we have to do things and how big things are now, uh, some, you got to go back, talk to your grandparents, and ask them, you know, uh, you know, some of their wisdom how to get through this. Well, I think the most important thing is with the opportunities coming, um, you know, if you set that June 15th, if you wanted to make a plan to try to plant, if you were, if it was possible, um, you need to be calm. You need to be positive. You know, a lot of mistakes happen when you're rushing around and emotions are rolling higher. And, and uh, that's the last thing we need to do is make our own mistakes uh, right now when everything's kind of against the farmers. So, um, you know, this too shall pass. And I think positivity is the most uh, the most you can do right now, especially, and if you have any questions, get a hold of your, your crop adjuster and your sales manager, area sales manager. If you got any questions, give them a call. And there's a, a hotline for the, the Iowa State put out, and we'll tag that on the uh, end of Cup of Joe, too. But uh, this too shall pass. We've been through similar situations in, in the past, and, I, and I, I really think that we we can get this crop in in June. Uh, we still got a shot at a very good crop. And in our southern areas, you know, they, 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 they can plant into the early July and still have a good crop yet. So, watch these markets. The market's gonna going to uh, make up the difference for these lower yields if that's if that's a possibility. But uh, you know, it's not the weather 
at planting, it's the weather after planting that determines yield. So uh, I've always seen Mother Nature seems like if they take it away from us in the front end, they give it to us in, on the back end. You know, we've seen those falls where we didn't get a frost, at least in the West Point area, into November. So, I mean, we still have a, a lot of opportunity yet. I know, Joe, you said uh, this week you had a customer come in and said that he's never not planted anything in May before. That's correct. And, uh, and, and we were talking about that a little bit, and I said, I can remember two times that I never planted anything on our farm in May at all, two, two times, and, and yet they actually turned out to be really good years in the end for us. But the, the key was to get planted. Well, one, one year we never planted a thing before June 14th when we started planting corn and still um, had a decent crop. So and that, that was Iowa City latitude, I-80. Yeah. I yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, my message to farmers is, uh, you know, don't give up. Uh, we are uh, responding to customers to move inventory around uh, to get the right maturities for you. You know, that's why we have our own trucks. We've been busy doing that, making plans. Some farmers have decided, you know, they want to switch some maturities. We've been doing that all week, um, staying busy. Uh, getting ready for the push when it happens, and uh, uh, if, if you need more soybeans, we can, we can handle that. We're, we're in a position to do that. Um, so all your options are open to you with, with working with Mershman Seeds. Uh, we will do our best to make sure that you have the right product for the maximum yield for your farm, and we'll give you the best advice that we can. Mm -hmm. Joe, another thing I wanted to make a comment about is we've been talking about populations on soybeans and, and increase them right now by 10%. One of, the other, one of the other things that I want to remind customers is do not shallow up your soybeans because we have lots of moisture right now because what this time of year you have higher temperatures and so that, that, that uh, seed furrow will dry out much quicker than it would earlier in the season. That's true. So you need to keep that population or that plant, uh, that seed planted at least an inch and a half deep so you don't get that, that surface drying that will cause uneven emergence. So uh, get, get that seed planted in the ground, uh, just like corn, very important to maintain that planting depth. Well, I think we covered about all the things that we think are on your minds, at least they're on our minds. We're mm -hmm. worried a lot uh, about our customers, and uh, we'll do the very, very best that we can to help you, and don't give up. So. See you next week.